Winston just said to me, Felix, what are those stocks that you were talking about the other day that you kind of kept to yourself? And I thought I didn't keep them to myself, Winston, but yes, we could make a video on that. And I could not just walk you through what those five stocks are, but I could actually teach you how I select them, why I like them, or maybe like them a little bit less, what's happening with them right now. And there are one or two names in there that we talk about quite a lot, but there are also some names in there that we actually never talk about, but that people have been asking about. So you've been asking about it, and I like to respond to what you ask about. So this is what this video is all about. If you want to understand the depth of this, then come and watch this video to the very end. Stock number uno is Mercado Libre. And Mercado Libre is the Amazon of South America, basically. Um, I've talked about them before. I, I like the stock a lot. I have some of the stock. Just as a disclaimer here, cash flow is sort of so-so. Let me get a blue pen. It's growing very nicely, profits through the roof, and very, very rare you get an A on profit and a C on value. Normally, it's like an E or an F or something on value in stocks that are profitable. And it says the stock's gone up a lot lately, but actually not that much when we look at the stock chart in, in, in a bit. So there's a lot that I like about this business, and they've been hit a little bit by the Argentina situation, as we shall refer to it politely, uh, you know, sort of the, the general implosion of the Argentinian economy, which seems to be a uh, um, sort of cultural thing that Argentina likes to repeat every every decade or, or so. And let's look at the hardcore numbers here of the company. 56% gross profit margin. That's pretty impressive, right? That's better than Amazon. Revenue is 15 billion, of which 1 billion is pure undeserated profit. And I look at two metrics for profit, well, really for assessing businesses, three really. Gross profit margin is number one. That tells you how good is the moat, how hard is it to replace this business. The higher, the better. Return on invested capital tells you essentially how, how good is management at investing your shareholder capital. How much are they making from it? Well, they're making 17%. It's pretty good, right? We like 17%. And how much are profits going up by in the long term? Not just last quarter, but like on average, 23%, also pretty good. And then I kind of take these two numbers here as a rough sort of guide on what I think the stock might do. Now, that's very rough. That's sort of not exactly invest in banking insight, but it's the way I like to look at it because it's very, very simple. I like simple. I have a simple mind. Um, most bankers do. <laughs> and yeah, look at profits here. Profits growing very nicely a year over year. Debt levels, very consistent, nothing crazy that they're spending on. I like that. I'm not a huge fan of big acquisitions. And <laughs> look at this. 5 billion free cash flow, 5 billion debt. They could eliminate all their debt in just one year. This is an amazing business. 5 billion free cash flow versus only 1 billion net profit. They have five times more cash flow than profit. So they're, they're just, it's just incredible. An incredible business. Insanely well run. So, Lot, a lot to love here. And then look at the consistency in earnings per share, profits per share. Every single freaking quarter in the last two years, they've hit those analysts who came up with those estimates pretty hard in the face with a knockout punch. And again, that means management is good. Management over delivers. Management does more than expectations. They also brought in 10% more revenue last quarter than expected. 10%. That's four, almost $500 million. That's pretty hard to do, right? And therefore, it's not massively cheap. 50 times PE, you are thinking, 50 times PE, that's madness, Felix. Why would you mention a stock like that? But that's for 2024. Let's just say they're going to grow and their growth is going to kind of collapse down to the 20s, which is what analysts are thinking because analysts kind of hate the world. In 10 years, you'd own the stock at a seven times PE if you were to buy it right now. I'm not telling you you should, it's not financial advice, just an old banker sharing some insight, right? So the growth in profits is the key to these stocks getting cheap, right? That's really what it's all about. And Mercado Libre's credit card pays off in Mexico, Brazil as Q1 profit source. This was the, the headline from Bloom Bloomberg just out. So they're getting into finance, right? They're getting into that, which is which is brilliant. And they're following a lot of the kind of Amazon rule book, but they're pretty innovative people. So very, very much like what they're doing. 
And here is the stock chart. We peaked at the beginning of the year. Then the little thing that we call Argentina happened. And everyone was really worried about it. And then they pulled some credit cards out of somewhere and, and, and massively surprised markets again. So we're heading back to all-time highs. Does that mean it's too late to buy the stock? You know what? It really depends on your horizon. If you're building a stock portfolio for like 20 years, share price is almost irrelevant. The quality of the company is what matters. And I would then buy good quality stocks every single month. If you're retiring in three days, that's a different story. You want to become a trader. You're looking at signals. You're looking at... at uh, trailing stop losses and you're looking at a very short term frame. Now I do both because I generate income from my trading and I can put that back into my long term portfolio, but it's a different mindset. We're talking here really about a long term investor, right? That's really what this is about. Here. So what's stock number do? It is Carnival. What do Carnival do? You know, big shipping kind of thingies. We'll look at that in a moment. And cash flow is pretty bad. It's growing very nicely. Stock's gone up not, up, not a lot. It's sort of profitable. And it's cheap as chips, apparently. So let's look at that, do that a little bit more. And what are they? Have? Like leisure travel services, basically cruise ships, right? Everywhere in the world. Carnival cruises, Princess cruises are probably the biggest ones uh, out there. P&O cruises, are they in that as well? Oh, yeah, yeah. They're not in that as well. I must have gobbled that up, I thought. I thought the UAE lot owned that, but interesting. So yeah, they've been, been around since 1972. Now, do I love industries where you have to build one of these thingies and then put some sort of monstrosity on top in a swimming pool and, and that kind of thing? No, because this is made out of steel or something like that. It's expensive and you only make money if you fill every single one of these little cabins, right? If you only, if, if you sell, so if you have these many cabins and you sell just that top row, do you make money, any money on the sale? No, you don't. What if you sell the next row? Do you make any money? Probably not. What if you sell that one? You probably still have any money. Now you're breaking even. Now you're making money. So it's the problem like airlines. You don't know how much money you made because you sold the ticket. You don't know if that ship's going to go out with one passenger or with 5,000 passengers. And that's a little bit the problem with these businesses. So management has to be insanely good to fill them. If you half fill them, you're losing money. And therefore, it's a pretty tricky business to operate because it's hard to get to high gross profit margins because it depends on, well, say, we the, say the ship's full. Do we put out another ship? so that we could fill that one and grow. But what if we put out the second ship and the second ship then is empty? Well, now we've tanked our margins, right? So it's a really challenging place to be. And therefore, it's a, an industry that tends to be cyclical. You see the revenue chart here? So they make money sometimes, and a lot of the time they don't. And they're coming out of the, the COVID misery and so on. But look at the return on invested capital. It's 5%. Mercado Libre, what is it, 18%? Profit growth is 12%. And let's face it, that's a profit growth from like the bottom of the sea. So stock could go up 5 to 12%. Well, you know what? Just buy SPY. S&P 500 ETF, right? So do I love this business? No. So why do I include it? Because I think it's, a, it's an interesting lesson to sometimes talk about things that aren't brilliant. You are going to get a heck of a lot of cyclicality in this. It's going to go up a lot. They have 32 billion in debt because they've got to buy those bloody ships. Free cash flow, 1 billion in a bit, right? A year ago, it was minus 6.6 .6 billion. So it would take them 30 years to pay off the debt. Mercado Libre, one year. Which stock would you rather buy? So it does, is this CCL, is it insanely cheap? Well, actually, we haven't got earnings per share figures here, but we should have multiples. Yeah, it's trading at 15x because most people on Wall Street understand this is just a crummy business. This is a, a business for people who want to trade the cyclicality of things. So you're looking at now, it's the consumer running out of money, credit card data seems to imply that. So maybe now is it going to be worse again. Maybe it's going to get better. You have to like try and time the bottom of the market. I don't want to do that. I'd rather pick 
a good business, keep putting money into it again and again and again and again. And then if I want to do short term stuff, not, I'm, I'm looking at a one week horizon. <laughs> I'm not looking at uh, what's going to happen in, in a year's time with people in Miami who want to go on a Caribbean cruise, right? Not really my thing. And Goldman says um, it's a buy. Okay, analysts tend to be wrong, um, but they see pricing tailwinds, which is good, including launch of new ships, which is good. But again, what do you do with the old ones? Is that that's you know? I know there's a lot of cruise demand, but it doesn't necessarily mean that cruise liners will make a lot of money. So, for me, this is a resounding no. I pass. And here's the stock chart. It's sort of, it's sort of gone nowhere really, hasn't it? In the last year. So yeah, probably isn't massively expensive. Uh, maybe you make money if you're lucky. Now, what about this one here? Chocolate. <laughs> now you got me excited. Hershey's. It's again, not usually a stock we talk about because it's not exactly like innovation, is it? Well, is it chocolate? Maybe it is. But cash flow is decent. It's growing pretty well. It's insanely profitable, which is why it makes the list. And it isn't particularly expensive. Stocks got have gone up a bit, but not that much. So let's have a look at their numbers. And, and what do they do? Well, chocolate, basically, right? Um, Hershey, Reese, Kisses, Jolly Rancher, Almond Joy, Brookside, Cadbury. They, they, they gobbled up. The Brits are very sad about that. Kit Kat, that probably would be my favorite out of those as a, as a child. Uh, and, and a load of stuff that I don't understand. Pirates, Booty. Um, is that chocolate? Seems incredibly inappropriate. <laughs> 1894, they've been around in, in Pennsylvania. 46% um, gross profit margin. That's yeah, it's okay. For a manufacturer, that's pretty good. For a manufacturer, typically 40% plus is sort of a gold standard. Revenue is going up a lot. 11 billion. 2 billion of that's profit. It's a pretty decent margin. And I like this. Return on invested capital is 25%. That gets a double tick. Management invests wisely. But profits are only going up 3% a year. Ah, that's, a, that's a bit of a fail, isn't it? So why is that? What's going on there? Let's have a look at their numbers. Net profits are increasing. That's real profits. Let's have a look at their debt. Going, yeah, 5 billion, a bit more than that. So it's like our oh, Mercado Libre fence. Free cash flow, 1.5 billion. That's pretty good for a chocolate manufacturer, I would have thought, because it's not exactly a subscription business. You, you don't prepay for your chocolate bars, do you? I mean, somebody probably does, but most people don't. Decent numbers. Decent numbers. What about management quality? Well, they're beating market expectations all the time. Clearly, the fat drugs haven't had an impact on Hershey's. How, what is it trading at? 20 times PE, so a little bit more expensive than the cruisers, although I'm sure they sell a lot of chocolate on those cruisers. But the problem is analysts, 21 analysts say there's going to be 2% growth next year, 8% growth the year after, 6%, 3%. I just don't really invest in businesses that are growing in the low single digits because there are businesses out there that grow in the high double digits. And... I don't get it. I just don't get it, to be honest with you. I also think a lot of headwinds from new competitors. Uh, they get a boost from high prices and cocoa shortage. Easier to raise prices if everybody else is doing it. But uh, here is the one-year stock chart on, on Hershey's. And I would actually think that the cocoa thing might be a problem for them because there is a limit to how much you can charge for a chocolate bar, typically, unless you have insane marketing power. But then you look at somebody like Mr. Beast coming out with his bars and, you know, selling a lot because he's Mr. Beast and gazillions of children watch his crazy videos. He's giving away 25 Teslas as well, apparently. Uh, so you're on the wrong channel, clearly. Not loving it. I mean, you could just argue that this is a bottom because we have for three quarters now basically gone sideways and therefore maybe it's a bargain basement kind of a purchase but i prefer my chocolate not from the bargain basement counter so for me there's another one that i would say no to and, and again I, I hope it's helpful to run through things sometimes that, that i don't like rather than just run through things where i go amazing now this is an interesting one let me go to one that i do really like anglo-american right cash flow okay it's not growing well Stock's gone up a lot. The question is why? We don't really like that. Very profitable, not insanely expensive. So what's it all about? 
Well, Anglo American is a mining company, um, copper in Chile and and and. Uh, lots of stuff in South, in, in South Africa and so on. Diamonds, platinum, nickel, steel making, coal. They've been around since 1917. They're listed in London. AAL, I think is the ticker. Are they very profitable? No. Lots of revenue. Yeah. Nah, income is sort of so-so. Return investor capital is... Nah. Growth rate's pretty decent. So why, why are we interested in this? Why are you showing me this, Felix? Why, 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 why? 16 billion debt, debt's going up. Mining is an expensive thing to do. Free cash flow has gone from 10 billion a year about 14 months ago to 600 million this year. So clearly, they are somewhat in trouble, right? They're clearly digging something out of the ground that people don't want. Uh, otherwise, they wouldn't have such atrocious numbers. And this is, of course, what it's all about. BHP, the competitor, is offering to buy American, uh, Anglo American. And they are offering to do that at about 40 billion market cap. And that isn't going to go through. They're going to have to up the offer. And BHP, as most mining mergers, uh, they bought something in some shale thing in the US. I think I want to say in 2001 or something like that. Winston, are you all right? Are you quite all right? What's that all about? You don't like mining stocks? You don't like mining stocks? <laughs> um, and they massively overpaid for it. So generally speaking, in the mining space, when you buy a big competitor, you tend to overpay for it. So the theory, therefore, might be that it could be a good exit. So you buy it on the hope that the merger goes through and you get a, get a bonus. And I used to do these kind of trades as a banker. We, we called them um, events-driven uh, trades. And, and it can be a good way to make some money. Now, the stock has gone up a bit already on the, on the news, a fair bit but it could probably go a little higher. I would imagine they're going to have to up the offer. And why is BHP so interested? Well, for example, both companies have major copper mines in, in Chile. So you could combine the operations, the logistics. You can save some money. Do I think it's a good idea, the, 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 the merger? Probably not. Mergers are very rarely a good idea, but it could be a punt to own a little bit of Anglo-American and just see if this is going to go much higher towards sort of 3,000. Uh, I would set a, a limit though on what you're willing to to risk on that one. So I would exit if this thing doesn't go through and I'd automate that exit. Now, here is a stock that I talk about quite a lot, PayPal. Now, PayPal has very good cash flow. It's not growing that much. Stock hasn't gone up a lot. We love that. Winston, hey, you're not going to bark in here, are you? Go on, sit down, sit down. <laughs> He's so sweet. Um, very profitable, and it's cheap. So what's it all about? Well, you know what PayPal does, right? Gross profit margins are not good. Revenue has gone up quite a lot, pretty decent. Net income is decent. Return on the best capital at 12% is just about passable. Earnings growth is not. It needs to be better. And the thought process here is simply that a company that generates four to five billion free cash flow, what are they doing with that? Well, they promised this year that they would buy back five billion of their own stocks. And that just supports the share price. I think they've got about 10 billion in authorized buybacks. I could be slightly wrong with that number, uh, but quite a lot. So has management done well? No, they've had the most atrocious management ever, but I do think the new management that they brought in about six months ago is better than you agree, Winston. There's a tail here somewhere. And I think it's fairly easy to dig yourself out of that. And for a payment processor with a 40% market share of online merchant pay uh, payments, it's pretty freaking cheap. That's my perspective. Obviously, you have to come to your own conclusion. But if you held this thing, for eight years, you'd only get 3x. You get a 30% yield on your shareholdings, which is pretty much unheard of. And all they have to do is sort of grow in the mid-teens, which I think is, is, is reasonable. But it is a transition year, which is what the CEO has called it. And therefore, I wouldn't expect fireworks. I would expect fireworks in the next 12 to 18 months. If it doesn't happen then, it'll never happen. Um, so... I have some trades open on this, which I gladly walk you through. If you want to know more about that, ask me down below. 
but the stock is recovering from its sort of lows here. We are on a rather decent upward trajectory, but it's going to take some time. It's going to take quarters of earnings that are good that give us more confidence, right? And this one was a decent set of earnings. It wasn't terrible. It was decent, but we're just sort of bouncing sideways here a little bit. Yeah, but you want to you want to stay in this kind of trajectory, keep moving upwards, take out the 76 and then head higher towards the 80s, 90s, 100. And, and I think at that point, I'll probably take profits and, and, and exit this particular venture. If you want to see how these stocks have done over the last year, who's the worst performer? Hard to tell with the blues, isn't it? PayPal is pretty bad down here. Hershey's is down here. Hershey's. In red, what's red? Oh, no, that was that was just volume. Okay, and then in orange we've got Anglo, the miner, ten percent up. Mercado Libre is up twenty eight percent, twenty eight percent, and the cruise people CCL are up thirty seven percent, which again makes me less bullish on the CCL people because they've had a pretty good run. M-E-L-Y, I think are going to have a better run. Anglo depends essentially on that merger. PayPal, I think, will take time. And Hershey, yeah, I just don't think the, the profit growth is there. So that's kind of the, the reason why I'm, I'm out. Um, if you enjoyed this video, slightly different format to usual, slightly different stocks to usual, let me know down below in the comments or share it with a friend or a golden retriever if you wish. This one's looking at me rather uh, menacingly, like he might want to be let in the kitchen and beg the, uh, the cook for some snacks. And I love you for watching. I love you for tuning in. Keep investing, keep getting smarter. And I hope to see you on the next one. Winston just said to me, Felix, what stocks are you buying in May? And I said, actually, I've got six on my mind. Have you got any on your mind?